So hello everybody and welcome to the DeBron Consulting Power BI and Excel webinars. So this is our Power BI and Excel clinic and you're welcome to another month's episode. Um, this episode is going to talk about Excel. We have five tips for Excel. We're going to do a lot of Power BI in this episode, but uh, five tips for Power BI as well. And then two awesome Power BI visuals. And we're also going to have a competition and we're going to win some prizes. So I would like us to just uh, check out the tools to see if it's working. Can you type into the chat? You should see something in the chat right now. I'm just saying hello. All right, good, everybody. So here we are. We um, Again, a lot of you joined this webinar from our Meetup group, and uh, we have a Meetup group in Nigeria, Modern Excel and Power BI uh, Meetup group. So if you go to meetup.com, you can find us. Uh, I think we're about 1,200 members now, or 1,100 members. So uh, join the Meetup group. We do live webinars, uh, live uh, meetups, as well as these online webinars every month. And more importantly, join the POG group. This is a new thing from Microsoft called Power BI User Group, POG, where you can get free answers on, uh, to all your questions on Power BI and Excel as well. So this is Nigeria Modern Excel and Power BI User Group. It's a POG group, so we have two groups. Please join those groups. So what are we doing today? Okay, this is just a bit about me. I, I use Excel, I've been using Excel for a very long time. I work at D Brown Consulting, I'm the principal consultant there. I have a lot of experience using Excel, financial modeling, and training as well, ATD trainer, master trainer, and uh, speaker at various events. So that's just quickly me. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to do, uh, we're going to have top five Power BI tips for the month. We're going to showcase two visuals, two Power BI uh, visualizations, top five Excel tips for the month. Then we have the August uh, update for Power BI desktop. For those that don't know, Power BI is a business intelligence tool from Microsoft that brings together various technologies that makes uh, reporting and visualization very easy for analysts. So um, a lot of the technologies in Power BI are also in Excel, but many people don't know that these technologies are in Excel. So what Power BI does is just makes the visualization very, very easy and very intuitive and allows other people that know how to create these visualizations to create free visualizations for us, the users. So there are so many wonderful visuals in Power BI and it's quite, pop quite popular and quite powerful. So what uh, Microsoft does is they update this tool every single week. So Every month, they compile all the updates for the various weeks for that month, and they do an, a Power BI desktop update. So I'll tell you the uh, list of things they did for this month, August. Then there's a prize draw. We'll try and find a winner for the prize draw. And then we have an Excel challenge for you. So this Excel challenge is quite an interesting challenge. If you get the challenge and you actually <laughs> solve it, sorry about that. That's uh, someone's I had to mute somebody's line. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, um, we have the prize, we have an, a challenge, and anyone that wins that challenge, the first person to get that challenge and send us the answer will get a free course from D Brown Consulting, a free training, live course, online course, whatever you like. Yeah, so, and then claim your template gift uh, of the month. So we have a small gift for you at the end of the webinar. All right, so let's get started. So top five Power BI tips for the month. That's the first thing we're going to do. So top five Power BI tips, so tip number one. So tip number one for Power BI tips is improved metric visual with new conditional formatting features. So there's something called a metric visual uh, in a, a, a matrix actually, this is not matrix, this is M-A-T-R-I-X, matrix visual. So improved matrix visual uh, for Power BI. Let's see how that works. Just give me a second, let me quickly get that up. Okay, so that's number one, improved matrix visual. So I'm gonna put up Power BI for everyone and we're going to use that to do the improved metric visual. You see that on your screen now, so I have Power BI up. This is Power BI. Again, for those that are not too familiar with Power BI, as I said, it's a visualization business intelligence tool from Microsoft and it's free, so this is completely free. All you need to do is go to www.powerbi.com and then you can go to downloads and you download Power BI Desktop, which is this tool. 
So for this tool to work, you need to bring in data and stuff. So we have other videos where we've shown you how to use Power BI. You could go to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and type D Brown Consulting and you'll get our YouTube channel. So there's this new metric visual or this uh, metric visual called a matrix, or, um, matrix visual. So this matrix visual in um, Power BI, if you look to the right, I'm pointing at it right now. If I click this visual, it's like a table visual. So, and this is kind of similar to a pivot table in Excel. It's basically the same thing. So let me just quickly create a, a report. Let me see, um, create store, let me put region. Uh, sorry, click on the visual first. Click on the visual, take region, and then let's take uh, under data, let's take revenue sum. Revenue sum, okay, let me, Increase the font size. Okay, so values, we can increase value size. There we go. And row headers, let's increase that. And column. Column headers. So I'm just increasing the default sizes there. They're quite small. So, and then the grid itself. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So as I'm seeing, you can see it to the right, I'm just clicking on the uh, formatting tab and I'm modifying the format so that we could see the visual better. So those are uh, things that's quite flexible. We could do nearly anything to the visual to make it look better and smarter. So the region, okay, so let's just see that. So this is our visual and if I increase, let me put another category there. Let me put states as well. So I have both a region and a state. So let's check that out. A few seconds, let's see. Text size, okay, text size is fine. All right, so if you look at this visual, I the new thing they did is they included conditional formatting. Now in Excel, we can do conditional formatting here, but they've improved the conditional formatting of these numbers. So I could decide that I want to text, I want to kind of color them based on their numbers, highest green and, and lowest red. So I come to the formatting tab here to the right. I go to conditional formatting. Then I can uh, decide, okay, conditional formatting, what are we doing here? We're saying the font should be on, the conditional formatting on the font should be on. I switch it on, I'm switching it on and off, now you can see the effect. Or I could decide to switch on the background formatting. This is the one that was there before, the default background formatting, so it's just filling the cell with red, green, depending on what values are there. Or you could just use the font formatting. So the font formatting, and if that's not okay, you could go to advanced controls, and advanced controls brings a box just like the um, Excel, and you could decide to click on something like diverge. So we have three colors. You can decide that minimum is uh, red, the uh, uh, center color should be yellow. Uh, that's what, what, what quite popular for people, yellow and then green. Although I don't really like that uh, kind of visual, but um, that's really how, how it's done as in using too much color. Using too much color is not really a good idea, but that's that's how that visual works. So you could play around with this new conditional formatting features, and that's, um, that's how it works. So it's pretty cool. So that's the matrix visual. So uh, tip number two, tip number two is using tool tips to show more context in a report. Now, this is quite a useful uh, trick or useful tip. Tool tips, what do I mean by tool tips? Let me go to another visual. Let's go to this bar graph visual here. So if I go to this bar graph visual, all right, so um, last month we showed all the standard visualizations in Power BI and how they work. You can go online to the YouTube channel and check, check out that video. So if you look at this uh, stacked bar chart, we have North Central, North East, North West. So if I maximize that for you, you could have a look. So you can look at this uh, visual. If I hover over a bar, I'll see something there. I see northeast and then the value for revenue sum. So this is the revenue sum for northeast. Now, what I always say when it comes to visualizations is always very good to show comparison. 
So wouldn't it be nice if I hover over this, I can actually see the value for revenue, which I can see, but I can also see the value for revenue for same period last month. I don't want the bar for same period last month here. I just want the value for how much it was same period last month. So for us to do that, I go back to my report. What you do is, do is click on the visual. You go to the visualization fields tab here, and there's a section here called tool tips. Hope you can see it. It's just around here called tool tips. So for tool tips, you just drop what you want to see when someone hovers over a bar. I want to see same period last year. So I go and look for uh, my DAX. I should have written the DAX already for same period last year. And I just drag same period last year and drop it inside tool tip. So once I drop it in tool tip, it hasn't changed the graph, but when I hover, it now shows same period last year figure. So let me maximize that for you. So if I hover now, I can see revenue sum and I can see revenue sum same period last year. I can do percentage uh, change. I can do percentage over budget. I can just add lots of uh, data there. So anyone that hovers over any bar can see the extra data. So that's tool tip. That's the use of tool tip. So I, for example, I could put uh, year to date if there's any year pick there, I can stick year to date and drop it in there. Yep. So when I come to tool tip, I can also see year to date. So so that's that's how tool tip works. Very, very useful uh, tip. Let's go to the next tip. Tip number three for Power BI is a simple DAX measure for calculating year to date. Okay, so we're gonna write a simple DAX measure for calculating year to date. All right, let's get some data. Let me just go to a blank, maybe August here. Let's come to this blank sheet here and let's create data. Um, let's say I'm going to pick, uh, go to my calendar, I pick year, let me drop year here, uh, let's take, take month, for example, this month, I take month, uh, then I take year, okay, I need the year to drop on the month, or let's say year first, not values, uh, let's use the metric visual instead, so I drop my year after month or before month, so this is my year, month, uh, let's increase the size of this. It's a grid size, rows, not the rows really, the uh, values themselves, the text size. Yeah, so I've increased the text size. Let's drop revenue. So I come and pick revenue figure, revenue sum. All right, so you can see my data here. Let's just increase the size again. So see my data, I have 2014 uh, revenue and 2015. If I come here on this visual and expand it, so if I expand this visual a bit, you can see 2014, January, February, and the like. So I would like to see if I can see January, February, March. I want to see year to date by the side. So year to date by the side, I would like to see year to date by the side, which means January will be the same thing. February will be summation of this two. Now to do that in DAX, you need to write a measure. So you need to come here and say measure. Now I already have the measure here, but I can just, let's just write it quickly. So I do a new measure and my new measure is going to be rev year to date, YTD. So rev YTD, and I'm basically going to say, okay, there's a function for YTD, for calculating year to date. Now in Excel, obviously we don't have this function, but in Power BI we do. So total YTD is the name of the function. So total YTD, T-O-T-A, total YTD. So we have total MTD, which is total month to date, total quarter to date, and total year to date. So I just say total YTD. It says, what are we doing total YTD for? The expression is revenue sum. I want my revenue sum. And then it asks for date. Where am I getting my dates from? I'm getting my dates from a calendar. Now, for those that don't know DAX, the next tip is going to be very good for you. If you don't know DAX, the next tip, just wait for the next tip. You would, you could do all sorts without even knowing DAX. So DAX is the language for Power BI, uh, data analysis expressions. That's what I'm typing. I'm using DAX. It's a little bit like Excel, but uh, it's also different. So D calendar date. So I'm saying 
give me the total year to date for revenue sum using the date in a table called the calendar. That's basically what I'm saying in this formula. So I've done that. I can come to my format. I want to click on the format. I can just enter actually. I can just enter and this is my measure called revenue year to date. In fact, select that measure. You will now see to the right that it has revenue year to date. And you look at it, you have January, February. January is the same as January. February is, is year to date, summation of February and January. Then once you get to December, it's summation of everything, which is uh, 48464. And then um, if you look at the totals, the totals are at the top. Now, one thing they also did in the matrix visual is you could have your total, your grand total at the top or at the bottom. Some people prefer their grand total at the bottom. So what you do is you click on the visual, you go to your formatting pane, you go to subtotal, and then you say your total shouldn't be at the top, your subtotal should be at the bottom. So you can see 2014, the total has now come down to the bottom. So we now have 48. So this total, this is your year to date. And then the new month of the new year starts again, another year to date section. So that's how we use year to date using a measure. Just total year to date is the name of the function. That's quick tip number four. So quick tip number four, that was number three, I think. Quick tip number four is let Power BI automate your DAX with quick measures. So I just told, I just wrote a DAX measure. It's called a year to date. But Power BI has the ability to uh, automate that for you. You don't need to write DAX or learn uh, DAX. Power BI can write that for you. So we're going to do that now. So how many of us here, uh, uh, how long have we used Excel? So I'm just going to launch a poll before I continue. I just want to know of the audience here, how, how long have you used Excel? <laughs> the funny thing is, your statistics here shows 36% of us here have just started using Excel, zero to two years. And also 36% have used Excel for more than 10 years. So we have very experienced and just uh, some newbies in Excel. So for the newbies, don't worry. I mean, Excel has changed so much that all of us that have been using Excel for like 20 years are still learning. So you're not in any bad position at all. In fact, you're in an excellent position. You're learning a software that has matured significantly not the old uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3 and the old 20 Excel 2003 style of using Excel. So isn't it straight from using the, the best tool possible? Okay, so that's cool. Let me close the poll. Okay, so I've closed the poll. So that was interesting. A lot of us here have just started using Excel and a lot of us also are quite experienced. Yeah, okay, so this poll is let's Power BI automate your DAX. So if you remember, I just did a DAX formula I just did a DAX formula here. So we can, let me write another DAX. Let's just try and create another DAX formula. But this time we're going to use um, Power BI to calculate, do the calculations itself. For you to use uh, Power BI to do a calculation, you first of all have to understand what it is you're trying to do. So for example, let's say I, I want to do, um, let me create a report of total revenue by state. And then I want to see how they compare to the um, to the state with the highest revenue. So, so I'm going to create a small table here, just a table. So I click table. I clicked on this table visual. I just clicked this table visual. Then I'm going to get the list of states. Let me go to D store. I know this is where I have my states. So I've listed out some states in Nigeria. Yeah, so these are my states. I just selected states here. Then um, let's see, I want to do some calculations based on states. So if I come to states here, if you look at where I am to the right, there is a tiny, the tiny buttons on the right. If I click those buttons, you will see a list of things I can do with states. Now, one of the things is new measure. New measure is you writing the measure. A measure is a calculation, a DAX calculation. That means you are writing it yourself. Well, I really don't want to write it myself. If you go to quick measure, quick measure is, is Power BI that is writing it for you. So when I click on quick measure, it brings up this dialog box. So this dialog box is like your, your DAX automation wizard, so to say. So when I click on select a calculation, all these lists of calculations on the left are automated DAX calculations. 
In fact, you can use quick measures to learn DAX. It's very cool to learn DAX with quick measures. So for example, I want to just do the average uh, revenue per category. So I do average per category, whatever average per category. So I'm saying average what? What am I doing average of? So average, I now go to where my data is. This is my data tab. And I'm just going to say, okay, I want the average of revenue. So revenue sum average, or I'll just say revenue column. So the column is hidden. I think it's hidden the column, so I just say revenue. Or revenue here, I just select revenue and drop revenue sum. So I'll do the average of revenue sum by state. I say OK. And once I say OK, all right, I have to get back to the tool. Once I say OK, it calculates the revenue sum average per state. If I tick that measure, you see the calculations have come into my uh, spreadsheet. So those are the calculations. Let me make this a bit bigger. Let's get the grid. Text size should be bigger. Okay, there we go. Right. So that's my average, average revenue. Let me make this a metric because metrics are is, a visual is easier to manage. Let me, yeah, reduce that. Okay, so that's my average revenue. What about um, some other calculation? Let's just check. If we can do some other calculations. Another way to find your calculation or your quick measures is once you do a calculation, you can come to um, the fields, and then under the fields, we've just done this calculation. I can click the drop down, and you can now say new quick measure. Just click the drop down of one of the calculations you've done, and just say new quick measure. Uh, let's quickly do another one. Let's see which one can we do. Um, you have some time intelligence measures. You have your running total measure, total for category filtered applied. So total for category filter applied. I can say total for a particular category that I have, revenue sum, and then I apply a, a filter. So I could just say total for, um, let's say, region, total for region. And I'll use revenue sum instead of this. I'm going to use... Uh, revenue sum. So I'm saying give me the total regional revenue sum. Let's just see what that does. Again, it, you, you just need to play around with this to see what happens. Let me let me delete this one to give us space. Let's come here, bring this out. Let's see what it brought out. Oh well, calculations actually brought out the same uh, the same values. Uh, that's, that's strange. So uh, not not this. Just revenue sum. I should have just done revenue sum. But you get the picture. As in, we basically can do all sorts of funny, interesting calculations with this. And again, you can use it to modify. Let me undo and bring that other calculation back. Let me bring this table back that I I deleted. Hope it hopefully comes back. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So this table that I did year to date, you could decide I don't know how to do year to date formula, for example. I want to see how the uh, computer, how um, Power BI can do year to date calculations for me. So I could come here and say new measure. You know, this is the calculation wizard. And I could say I want to do a year to date of total. Year to date total. So I want to do year to date total. And I'm going to base my year to date on revenue, revenue sum. So I want revenue sum year to date. But then there's a date field here. And um, there's one small flaw in this uh, quick measure. The date field uses an internal date field for Power BI. But most times, if you do our courses, for example, you see that you need to use have a calendar. You need to bring a date from a calendar. But if I bring a date from a calendar, this will not work. But don't worry, just still do that because this will not work, but you would see the formula inside this, uh, inside here. You see the actual formula I tried to use to calculate total year to date. So by doing that, it, you can see it says time intelligence quick measures can only be grouped or filtered by Power BI provided date. Now they're changing this in the next couple of months. Power BI, uh, Microsoft team are going to correct this. That means it needs to use its own dates. So but the end of the day is you can use this to learn DAX because look at the measure we created. If you, if you look at it, this is the measure we created. So since you see the measure we created, you can easily modify your formula, just delete all of these stories here. Yeah, 
and then now that you know, okay, this is the measure that works, you can just modify it a bit so you can let power let the quick measures create the uh, DAX for you, and then just modify it. And once you modify it and enter, your calculation should populate like this. So it populates fine. So quick measures will help you learn DAX. So try and explore quick measures to help you learn DAX. It's very powerful, help you learn DAX. All right, number five, the last tip for Power BI. So our last tip for Power BI before I go to the tips for Excel is create scenario analysis with the what if parameter. This is a completely brand new um, tool that they just brought into August. The August, I think it's just August or was it July? I think it's the latest August uh, Power BI that they, they brought it in. So using the what if parameter. Now what is that? Let's see what that means. Okay. I'll still use this. Let me just remove some uh, calculations we don't need. I don't need year to date. Let me just leave revenue. Uh, I don't need the second year to date. Okay, so if you look at this revenue, what if my revenue went down by 2%? What would have happened to revenue? What if my revenue went down by 2% or went up by 5%? It would be nice to do those calculations. So what we used to do in the past is we do something called a calculated or a, what we call um, a disconnected slicer. So you do a disconnected table and then you create a disconnected slicer, some strange strange stuff like that. But anyway, how, how do we kind of put revenue scenario here where revenue is less by 5%, less by 4%? So the first thing you should do is just click out here and we come to modeling because this is now uh, analytics we're doing. If you go to modeling, there's a new section called what if. This is completely brand new. So if you have an old Power BI desktop, go download the new one. This is really, really cool. So new parameter, what does that mean? So I want to create a new parameter where I'm going to take revenue. I'm going to do different scenarios of revenue. So let's click on new parameter. The new parameter brings this up, a what if parameter. So let me call this revenue scenarios. So I'm calling this revenue scenarios. I use whole number. Let's say I want a scenario from minus 10, which I'm going to use as minus 10% later, to 20. So m minimum minus 10, maximum 20. Then increments of one, that means 1% increments. Add a slicer to this page. It means it's going to add a slicer to us to slice this information. So let's click OK. So what happens here is this. It's what is done is it's generated this slicer. If I drag this slicer to the right, for example, you see minus seven in the box. So that's one thing it did. It created this slicer, but more importantly, it has modified my data model. It has actually created something called revenue scenario. If you look to the right, I, have, I now have a new table called revenue scenario. Let me show you that table on the left. If I click data, you would see that there's a new table in this my data model called revenue scenario. So look at what it did. It just listed out the minus 10 I had put for my scenario to 20. So minus 10 to 20. So these are all the values. It generated it. So this is a table. And you know, with a table, I can even create a new measure, a new column, for example. I can call this column maybe a scenario scenario percentage or something. So I call it scenario percentage where I'll just say it's equal to a revenue scenario, a revenue scenario, um, yep, just revenue scenario divided by, let's say divided by 100 so that I can make it a percentage. So if I do that, I can also just uh, click on the percentage sign, click on this, yeah, click there and then click on the percentage. Click inside there and click on the percentage sign itself. Let's make it a percentage format. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so we have, we have basically created another column. So I just click there. I've created another column which I can use in the report. Now, if you look at your uh, relationship diagram, 
you see that this is a disconnected table. Now, we used to do this manually before, so all of this is now automatic with the what if, the new what if parameter. So this is disconnected from my data model. But um, I now have this, and I can show you how we will now use this in a, in, a, in a report. So if I come in here, come to the chart, I could decide, okay, do you know what? Um, for this field, I don't want to drive any scenario. I want a percentage, scenario percentage instead. So here I have the percentages. Oh, it's showing 700% for some funny reason. It's, uh, that's 10%, good. So you can see the percentages there. Maybe I don't want the decimals. I can easily go back to my data model, highlight it, and uh, remove my decimals. I don't want decimals, no decimals. There we go. Come back to my report. There are no decimals. Right. Excellent. So when I click on, when I put minus 4%, I want my revenue to reduce by 4%. So we're now going to create another measure here. So I just come here and say new measure. And my new measure is going to be um, revenue scenario is equal to, I'll just say it's equal to um, revenue. So the revenue sum multiplied by open my bracket, one uh, plus my uh, scenario, um, whatever scenario I have picked. Just a scenario, revenue scenario value, revenue scenario, revenue scenario value, all right. So revenue scenario value, then obviously I have to divide this by 100. Okay, so let's see how that works. So we have our revenue scenario now, and when I put that there, I could see that this is my revenue scenario. I have this figure is going to reduce by, so if it's minus 4%, that's this minus 4%. So obviously, this is the reduction or I could just add revenue to that so I can actually see the actual total revenue after the deduction. So I add revenue sum to that. Uh oh, let's see. Let's see what maths. Something's up with my maths. One plus this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I have to put a close bracket there. Yep, close bracket. Oops, what happened there? Let's look at my mathematics. Revenue sum times. One plus revenue scenario, okay. Oh, one plus revenue scenario and then divided. This is actually supposed to be divided by, okay. Uh huh. Now this should work. So of course you need to get your almost your board math and your mathematics uh, correct before you finish your formula. Let's take revenue scenario now. And now this is the correct formula. Then you can obviously put your currency symbol. Yeah, just put my Nara symbol so it looks the same. So this is revenue when we uh, our revenue drops by 4%. I can now drag this. See, the nice thing, I can drag this to 1%. You can see this is now when revenue is up by 1%. If I put it at zero, obviously it's going to be the same. Yeah. So you can now use this, this drag, just drag this, and you can modify what your revenue looks like when you have this scenario. And of course, I could put this in the chart, for example. Just do this in a chart. Oops, sorry about that. Let's let's create a chart. Click on this and let's create a chart for this. Click a line chart and you can see your scenario. This is your scenario when revenue is up by 4%. This is your scenario when revenue is uh, what it is. And as you change your slicer, your chart updates. So you, you've, you're doing scenario analysis. And there's so much you can do with this, really. This is just a tip of the of all what you can do. Right. Okay, cool. So someone just asked, for a year end that is not January to December, this is uh, uh, Biola Sani, for a year end that is not January to December, how do you do year to date? So that's an excellent question. Let me show you. It's very easy, actually. So if you, um, let me go back to a metric. So if you look at my, if you look at this, um, sorry, let me undo. So if you look at this and I come back to my metric visual, let me bring in year to date. 
So if I come in here and I bring in year to date value, let's go to data, I bring in a revenue year to date. Now, this is my year to date value. The formula for year to date actually allows you to this to kind of tell it what um not this one, the formula for year to date tells you what year end. You can decide and tell you what year end. So let's assume my year end is March. So if my year end is March, because it's an American dating system, I can just say, for example, three, I'm, I'm guessing that is slash I'm going to use here. I put it in double quotes. Uh, three slash one slash, uh, let's say 2014. The, the key thing is just needs to know what month uh, year end it is. So my year end is March. Just putting it there that my year end is March. So once I enter, let's have a look. If your year end is March, so let's say September, let me forward, let me sort by date here. Yeah? Let me sort this date. Good. So I've sorted this date. So if you look at, I have January, February, March. Then um, let's see your year to date, revenue sum year to date, 16. Okay, let's change this. So April is your four. So April is where it should start as your year to date. Your year to date starts from March. Oh, no, it starts from April, actually, April. So April should be where it stops. So let's, let's change that again. Let's see if it's, uh, it knows this as one, three, instead of three, one, let's enter. Okay, let's see if that kind of corrected it. Three, eight, four, yeah. So year end is March, three, eight, four. You can see it's starting from March right now. Revenue sum year to date, revenue sum, revenue sum. Let me remove this scenario, it's kind of confusing. By the end of the day, your formula allows you to choose your year to date. If you look at it at the top here, it says what's your date and then what is your year end date. So dates year to date, what is your year end date? So once you pick my year end date is April, is March or my year end date is June, then it will correct all the year to dates uh, for your year end date. So uh, my year end date is uh, 31st of March, uh, let's see, 30th of September, April, June, and November. So 31 slash three slash 24 for example, you put that in double quotes. So that should now correct your year to date. So I have January, February, March, and then let me sort this by date, by month. So I have January, February, March, January, February, March, and then it's April is when it starts again. So if I remove scenario, so you see that, let me just remove the scenario. So if you look at this visual here, let me increase the grid size. So look at this visual. So I have January, February, March, uh, that's the old uh, dates. Then I have April. April is when your year to date really starts. April, so this is the previous year because I didn't have any values for that previous year. So April, your year to date starts in April. May, June, July, August, September, and that's how it flows. So it's, it's growing starting from April. That's your year to date. And you can also specify that your year to date also affects the, the month, the day, and everything, and that works fine. So ask your questions, and we'll continue there. But let me quickly get back to the uh, plan. We've done the visuals for the year. Uh, we've done the visuals for Power BI. So custom visualizations for the month. So I have two custom visualizations that I'd like you guys to go check out. Very new custom visuals and they're very powerful custom visualizations. So the first one is something called the monthly calendar visual. Monthly calendar visual. So it's almost like you're doing a project management in Power BI. Although there's some other very cool uh, tools for that as well. So let's see how that looks. So monthly calendar visual, let me come to a uh, new um, page, I'm just inserting a new page here. So I've inserted a new page. Now, when you want to get custom visualizations, you come to your home tab and then you go to, there's a section here for inserting custom visuals, custom visuals. 
you go and insert either from the store or if you've already downloaded the custom visualization, you say from file. So if I click on from store, it's going to lo it's going to kind of uh, navigate to Microsoft's. Uh, uh, it's going to navigate to Microsoft Store online, and there are many many custom visualizations there. I think there are almost a hundred. These are custom visuals are visuals that are. Uh, designed by Microsoft themselves and other people that can be used free of charge. Okay, there's an unexpected error. Okay, let me see my internet access. Anyway, I think I've opened the calendar visual already. So you go to from store and then navigate to online uh, store and then you can download any custom visual you like. So what, or you could just download it and say from file. So let's try this again. If it doesn't work, I'll just download from file. Okay, it didn't work, so this is just uh, not usually common this way. So from file, I can decide to navigate wherever it is I've saved my custom visualizations. I think I have some somewhere here. I think there was a custom visual resources, custom visualization. I have quite a number of custom visuals here. Let me see if I dropped the calendar visual. Okay, I don't think I did. SanDisk visual. So once you download the uh, visualization and you drop it, you can now open it. But I have it opened already, so let me just open that custom visual for you to see and see what, what it does. So here we have the custom visualization called the calendar visual. So this is the calendar visual. So I come on. I like this calendar visual. And the calendar visual will now ask you to drop certain things. What value are we analyzing? What's the date field? So my date field is my date field here. Um, no data for selected year or month. So let's go and see what data am I looking at. Um, let's see what data do we have here. Let's go to the data or fact file to get some data. So I'll just say values. So I'm dropping values here. So I just dropped values. And what has happened is it has created a calendar. So if you look at it, it's created a calendar. And this is the calendar visual. And there are values in there. Although they're not looking too sharp, let's increase the size. I can maybe improve the format of my visual. Um, let's just increase the size of the data. Increase the size. So good, you can see the values now clearly. Uh, the alignment, I could change the fonts for the values if I like, red, but I think the values are fine, black. So these are values, this is like your revenue for these months. Now you can use, you can now shade the data. You can shade the data based on what, what's in there. So for example, my minimum value I could decide is gonna be red. A red shading, my center value is gonna, as we said, yellow. Now. I won't recommend these colors that I'm choosing. It's just that a lot of people like to do red, yellow, uh, uh, green. Uh, so my yellow is my middle value. So um, diverge, I have to switch on diverge so I can be able to see yellow. So yeah, you could have this, but I, I think it's better use subtle colors maybe. Maybe a light shade of blue followed by a darker shade of blue, then a far darker shade of blue. Something like that. Let's see. I don't even like this blue. I prefer another blue. Uh, let's make it darker than this. Maybe green then. So yeah. So you have these shadings. Now this is January. I can increase the font size. So you have to modify the title. Maybe you make the title a little bit bigger, like this, right? Okay. Now we don't really need the title. I don't think it's adds value. Let's change the. Um, let's put. January itself, the name of the month should be uh, kind of a better size label. So you we, we can change the background as well, the lookup aspect, the borders, general formatting, uh, the calendar format itself. We can increase the thickness, border thickness, that's the border around it. We could, um, for example, font weight, let me just make that 300. Uh, make my font weight 300 and then the text size should increase. Okay, that's much better. Now you could see that this is January 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Now 
you can now bring a slicer. So if you don't want to just see only January, for example, I can come here and bring a slicer. For slicer, I'm going to create another visual, which I like, which is the tree map. So I click the tree map, and I'm going to put um, the percentages inside the tree map. And in the percentages, I'm going to break it down under my days to the right. I'm going to break it down by month and year. So let's just say year, month. I have a year, month uh, visual here. Year, month number, year, month short. Let me use year, month short. So now, although oh, it looks kind of strange, right? So this is year, month. Um, I can pick whatever year, month is, and then my calendar should change to that. So if I click on this, click on this one, year, month is 2016, uh, or let, let's, let's create a slicer instead. It's kind of easier. Good, this is slicer. So if I create a slicer, I can slice my data by, so I'm slicing it by May. This is, 20, this is May 2016. So this is what happened in May 2016. This is what happened in uh, June 2016. Now this visual only shows one month at a time, the calendar visual, but you can just pick whatever month you want here. So this is quite a cool visual. If you like that visual, just click on the, uh, your hand sign. Do you like this visual? On, the, on your chat or the, on the tool you have, just click on the hand sign to show that you like this visual. Do people like this? Does it make sense, this visual? Okay, some people are putting their hands up, okay. So it's quite, you, it just depends on your imagination really. You can improve, you can uh, decide on uh, what you want to use this best for. I mean, could someone tell me what they would use this visual for? Could you type it in the chat? Type in the chat or the question box, what would you use this kind of visual for? Yeah? Can we type? What do you think you would use it for? So while you're typing, I'm going to go jump straight to the next visual. Uh, so this is a nice visual. The next visual that um, Power BI launched recently, a custom visual, which is really good. And let me just go to the slide so you can see what I'm talking about. It's, um, let's quickly get to the slide. One second. Okay. So visual number two, we had just the calendar visual there. Visual number two is called the new Power BI KPI visual, or the new Power KPI visual. So this Power KPI visual is from Microsoft. Microsoft are the ones that uh, created it. And let's see if this works. This hopefully works this time from store. Okay, it wants me to log in to, okay, let's just log in, sign in. Okay, anyways, it wants me to log in. When you want to create a custom visual, either from store, under custom visuals, or from file. So if you go from file, that means you should log on to the store, Microsoft store. Let me see if I have the Microsoft store up so that I can just show you what I'm talking about. Let's see, store, so Power BI, store. Okay, so the store, I have the store visual with me. So let's check out the store, office store. So if you go to the office store, if you look at the office store, you go to, you just go to Google and type store.office.com or just store.office.com, you get to the Office Store. So the Office Store has all the custom visualizations for Power BI and also quite a lot of add-ins on apps for Excel. So we're thinking of doing a webinar on apps. So we just do a webinar on apps for Excel and apps for Power BI, but probably apps for just Excel. You'd be amazed at the things you can add to Excel. But here we have Power BI. So you can see Excel, OneNote, Outlook. If I click on Power, uh, it's not PowerPoint, Power BI. So when I click on Power BI, these are the apps for Power BI. So these are the apps for Power BI. You have your infographics apps, and there are about 100 different custom visuals. So you see this Power KPI visual. So this is the one that I was uh, referring to. If I click on this Power KPI visual, you can click on Learn More then you'd see, uh, you can actually watch a video on how to use it. So you just uh, play the video and it kind of goes through and gives you a very detailed, detailed explanation of how to use it. Yeah, 
So it, it's an excellent visual, and let me just show you the visual. So what you do is once you come to this page, you can click on Add to Add It. Once you click on Add to Add the Visual, now remember that when I was in Power BI, it says we could download from the store or we, we, we could pick from the store or download it ourselves. So when you click on Add, then you can now download the custom visual to your desktop. And once you download it, then you can use it. And you can also download a sample. So you could download the sample report as well. So it's really, really powerful. So let's look at it. Let's quickly look at what it does. So we'll move on. So I think I downloaded it, I hope. Let's see. Um, here we have our custom visual. Yes, I think I did. So here we go. We have our custom visual. So this is it. This is the Power BI. Uh, this is the Power KPI visual. Power KPI visual. Pretty powerful visual. It has a sample report. And you can download this free. So you, you basically have KPIs. You have quite a lot of things happening here. You have your line chart. You can see my um, uh, tooltip showing different units. So I'm plotting my targets. And I can see that, OK, I'm above target by 8%, for example. Year on year, I am up 14%. Uh, units that I've sold is 895,865. My date is uh, 7th, uh, February 7th. You could change the format for that. So then you have all these lines here that shows your units against your target, against your prior year, against your variance, all in one chart. This is very, very useful. You could reduce the size of the chart and it looks like this, a small KPI top. And you could use these small ones to create a very nice dashboard. Once you download this custom visual and the sample from uh, the store, you will get tips and tricks. These are tips and tricks for how you change different things in the visual, how you in include many KPI indicators into your visual. So this is a very powerful visual. It could take you a whole day to kind of get used to how you use it. So I, I recommend you download this. It's very powerful. So try and download it and use it and see how it works. So that's the new custom visual. Let's quickly get into Excel. We are fast as usual, running if we run out of time. It's so amazing how time flies. But my first quiz is create a live connection between Excel and PowerPoint. So let's quickly do that and then we get to our uh, prices for the for the year. How do you create a connection between Excel and PowerPoint? So I'll have an Excel file open. Let me just quickly do that. How do you have an Excel file open? Let's see how that works. I have an Excel file open with you guys here. And I want to create a connection between Excel and PowerPoint. So if I have data here, and let's assume I want to connect a section of this data. So I can highlight this data. And what you need to do is basically use one tool called the camera tool. So you'll take a picture of this data, and then you take it to PowerPoint. So that's how you connect to PowerPoint. Take a picture of this and take it to PowerPoint. Once you once you take a picture and you 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 copy the what it is you want to uh, take to PowerPoint, then you go to PowerPoint. You open up PowerPoint. So let me open PowerPoint. Let's get a new PowerPoint open. And we have PowerPoint by the side here. So this is PowerPoint by the side. I come to PowerPoint, and instead of just dropping it into PowerPoint, you know, I've just copied this. I come to this dropdown for paste, and I say paste special. When I say paste special, I can now say paste a link. This is the trick, paste the link, and then select this uh, Microsoft Excel workbook object and say OK. So once it pastes a link, right now in my PowerPoint, I have that image. You can see it here, right? That's my PowerPoint. Let me just delete all this. So this is my PowerPoint. Now this image is live. When I change something here, so let me just uh, minimize this a bit so you can see both. So if I come here, for example, and I change this to David, right? If you look at your PowerPoint to the right, you see it has changed already to David. So this is a live connection between Excel and PowerPoint. So if you copy, paste special, paste link, you can create anything you do in Excel to just update in PowerPoint. So that's the trick. Now, unfortunately, we don't have much time for the Excel 
tips. So what I promise to do for you guys is I'm going to record these online and then I will give you the link for it online because what I want to do is go to the prize. I want to see who is going to win our prize for the month. So these are the, uh, the tips I'm going to give you online. I'm going to record it and then I'll put it on the uh, YouTube channel and we will send you the links for this. So easy way to understand the offset function. That was the next tip. Offset function is a very powerful function, but we have a very easy way we're going to teach you how to use it. Then the next tip, number three, is going to use the offset function to create a dynamic chart. So an automated dynamic chart in Excel, we're going to use the offset function for that. That's tip three, which we'll do. Then tip four is using slices in a pivot table to create a simple dashboard. So if you remember, we did a Power BI and we used a slicer in Power BI, a disconnected slicer called a, a what if parameter. Uh, here we're going to use the slicer in Excel pivot table to create a simple dashboard. Then the last tip was going to be using slicers directly in Excel. So not in pivot table, directly in Excel. Can we use a slicer directly in Excel? So we'll do all that. But here is your Power BI desktop update for the month of August. So Power BI, Microsoft just launched the August uh, Power BI desktop update. So you could download August uh, Power BI desktop, which came in last week, I think, or early this week. So if you come to uh, go and download it, these are the new things you'll get. These are the new features that they've brought in. I showed you a few things about the matrix visual, but these are all the other new stuff they brought. Okay, you could see the what if parameter that I just showed you that is under analytics and modeling. New scatter chart analytics feature, they've made the scatter chart faster. If you remember, yes, uh, last, last month, I showed you scatter chart and how you could play the scatter chart. They've made it easier and kind of quicker and easier to use. They've added a new quick measure. We talked about quick measure called weighted average. And they've done all sorts of stuff. So you could go to their YouTube channel and watch all these updates and download the latest uh, for August. So challenge for the month. Who is ready for this challenge? This challenge, if you do win this challenge, you are entitled to uh, register for any of our two-day courses, and that's worth 160,000 Naira. So this is a 160,000 Naira challenge. Who is ready? Okay, so I'm, I'm asking who is ready. I want to see anybody's hands that are up. We are ready for this challenge. Okay, so the challenge is this. I want you to build, I'm going to show you a template. A template that is what we call a, a it's an Excel function translator. So I want you to build an Excel function translator. So, but we're going to show you the Excel function translator. We just hide some things and you need to build it. If you're able to build what I'm going to show you now, you're going to win a training from us uh, worth uh, almost 200,000 Naira. So Excel function translator, what do I mean? Now, Excel is not just in English. I mean, there's Excel in French, in Italian, in German, in, in Dutch, in Croatian. I mean, there are different languages that Excel is in. So usually what happens is, English is the most popular, obviously. So when someone tells, I tell a German guy, hey, do a VLOOKUP. He's like, v, what is VLOOKUP? He needs to understand VLOOKUP in German. So you can imagine if we had a Yoruba Excel, for example, or a Hausa Excel. Can someone tell me what would VLOOKUP be called in Yoruba? VLOOKUP means vertical lookup. Can you translate it to Yoruba? Anybody? Uh, my Yoruba is not very good. So t type it and let me try and pronounce it. Somebody should type in the chat or a question. Let me, or you can put up your mic and let me try and pronounce it. Uh, VLOOKUP. Let me see. Oluo, <laughs> Oluo, somebody wrote Oluo. Okay, that's interesting. If you look up in Hausa, uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so that's basically what we're talking about. So now let me show you the challenge. So let me show you the um, Excel function calculator. So this is the challenge for you guys. Challenge is build this. So build this and win yourself uh, a training. Now look at this, the function calculator, this is all Excel, there's no VBA, no VBA, you shouldn't use macros, that's very key, you're using pure Excel. So if I, if I select, for example, English, right, I select English, 
here it says function name in English. I have to change this, okay? So I select, um, let's say select everyone that everybody knows VLOOKUP. Where is VLOOKUP? So you can see that I'm scrolling, right? VLOOKUP, we're at the end, VLOOKUP, where are you? Okay, see so VLOOKUP. So English, a function called VLOOKUP is obviously going to be called VLOOKUP in English, but I don't want it in English. I want, what is it called in Danish? So I pick Danish and it says Lopslag. <laughs> Very strange. So <laughs> this is the description in Danish, Danish Lopslag. What I really want you to do, you don't need to make it as beautiful as this, but you should be able to speak any, any language here. For example, I can take Brazilian. Let's say it's a Brazilian guy. A Brazilian guy is trying to understand what this function is. So these are all the functions in Brazilian. Very strange, right? Uh, I have no idea what these are. Let's take this for example. Shama. So Shama in Brazilian, in Danish is called Kald. Shama in Brazilian. But Shama in Brazilian, in English, it's called Call. Okay? Does that make sense? So what I've done for you guys is you see the data. This is the data you, you used to build this. So you're going to use this data. I'm going to try and build this whole solution. Try and build this tool. So we're giving you this tool free of charge. It's an excellent tool. And this is the data for you to try and build this, right? Of course, we've kind of oh, locked it somehow, so you can't really break this. But try and build this yourself, and then you win the prize. You email it to training at dbrownconsulting.net. Training at dbrownconsulting.net. So that's your challenge. Now, all of you should look at the download. There's a download for you there already. If you look at your materials, you see something called handouts. The handout, that is the actual, this, this spreadsheet is in the handout, so go download it. All right, so go download it. Now, what I want to do now is I want someone to win a, a training. Someone's going to win an online training right now. So you, apart from this, you're going to win our online, one of our online courses. So we have an online course on officetraininghub.com. So based on the people that have stayed uh, up here for, uh, for this webinar, we're going to just do a simple poll for someone to win. All right, let's see. I have Abiodun is in the house. Yes, Abiodun, you're in the house. You have Celestine. You have different people in the house. So I'm going to just do a, I'm just going to do a poll. We're going to do a random, let's just do something in Excel to find out who wins this. Okay, so let's see. Let me get everybody's names out. Okay, copy email address to clipboard, let's see. So I have everyone's names. Just so that we know everybody should pick a number, okay? So let's see, can you guys pick any number at random? I just want you to pick one number and type that number into the chat or into the question box. And that number is going to represent you. So here I am here in Excel. I'm just going to have a blank Excel. And I want you to pick a number in, in the chat that represents you. Uh, anyone that picks a duplicate number, then that's fine. So I can see someone with nine. Someone picked nine. Someone picked eight. OK. You all know yourselves when you pick those numbers. Someone picked eight. Someone picked 12. So if you look at the question box, everybody's picking numbers. Two. Three. Okay, someone else picked twelve. So um Alique, is it Jesse or me? Can you pick another number? Someone has already picked twelve. So pick a random number, because someone had already picked twelve before you. So can you pick something else? So pick another number. I can and then three. Um uh, Bardi. Someone already picked three, so you can pick three. I know someone picked one. Bardi, someone else picked three. Okay, so pick a different number, any number at all, 50, 500, doesn't matter. And two people, Folu pick seven, but someone else pick seven. Uh, Folu pick seven before Onye Uchi. So Onye Uchi pick seven, uh, pick another number. Don't, don't pick seven, somebody, too many people have picked seven. Everybody must have a unique number. Kanayo, you're not going to win with zero. <laughs> the random number generator I want to do when pick zero. So pick something else, Kanayo. So 14, good, I can see it's 14. So everybody knows their numbers, 14. I'm going to close this now so that I know I have the numbers that I'm going to use for the poll. Yes, seven. So the first person that had seven. 
Yeah, 7, 14, good. 54, good, 54, all right. Okay, so let's stop here. So everyone has a number. Now, if you had a duplicate number, you have is the first person that picked that number that gets it. So let's see who is winning this. So we're going to do a quick poll now. All right. If I don't have your number, you better shout before I start. We're going to do a small uh, lottery. So five. I can see someone with five. And I can see someone with lol. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's do the lottery. So these are the numbers I have, those that are playing this lottery. And the lottery simply is this. I'm going to use um, the, a random number to do the lottery, and I'm going to use the offset function. So let's assume I'm standing here. I'm just going to randomly go down here and pick somebody's number, and then whoever person has that number is the winner, right? So I'm going to tell offset to stand here. Let me make this a bit bigger. And the funny thing is I'm going to write a formula in here, right? And this formula, I'm going to, let me make it bigger for you. So I'm going to insert a shape so you can see it clearly. I'm inserting a shape like this. And this shape is going to show me what the answer is in here. I'm linking that shape to this. And this shape, I'm just going to make it uh, very large. Yeah, it's going to be the number that will come out eventually. And centralize it. That's that. Fine. So just be watching this. The number that comes into this shape is the person that wins this. So if I come in here, I'm going to use offset. The offset I, I wanted to teach you guys. Offset is a very simple function. Offset just says, hey, stand here. I'm telling offset, stand there. And then I want you to go a number of rows down, OK? And then I want you to also go a number of columns left or right. I don't want, I want something to stand here and then go down based on the command I give it for rows, and then also go right. The next one is for it to go left or right. I don't want it to go left or right. So the only thing I want it to do is go down, but I want it to go down randomly. So let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 numbers here. So I'm going to tell it to go randomly, randomly go down between 1 and 12. So if you look at this formula, this formula says offset stand here, and I want you to randomly come down any number that randomly comes between 1 and 12. So when I enter now, whatever number you see here is a winner. Whatever number, which are these numbers you see here, is the person that wins this. So are we ready? Drum rolls. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Let's go. Who is the winner? Oh, oh, zero. How is that possible? <laughs> zero. Is there anybody with zero here? No. Uh, no. Uh, this, this is not working. Zero, zero is one of the random numbers I can come out with. But I don't want it to be zero, obviously. Zero is, means don't go anywhere. Just stand there. Let's enter again. Ah, random. F9, F9. F9 is not working. What's happening? Run between. OK, let's check. Formula break. Let's look at this. So run between 1 and 12. And then number of columns you should move is 1. So this 1, sorry, this should be 0. It's me that made the error. You know, we said, look at, it's very good I made that error. So if it's standing here, we said come down whatever you come down, and then one means go right one step or go left one step. That's what one means, move a column right. We're not moving a column. So if I click OK, you're now going to see the answer. If I click OK, it's now going to not move right. It was moving right before. It's just going to go down. Watch this. The answer is who wins is nine. Who had nine? Let me see. Who is the person with nine? Abiola Sani, uh, the winner. So Abiola Sani, let's give it up for Abiola Sani. He's the winner. He's the winner of the uh, online training. Now, if you have done our online training already, you can you can gift it to someone else. So you're winning this course. Thank you. Let's give it up for Abiola Sani. Yes, yes, yes. You have won. And let me show you what you've won. You've won this. So you've won one of our courses on officetraininghub.com, which is reporting, report automation in modern Excel. So that's the course you've won. So it's coming up now. I'll show you www.officetraininghub.com. You're winning the reporting auto, automation in modern Excel. So the course will teach you how to automate anything, any report in Excel. Every, any report at all you have in Excel to teach you how to automate it. You will never need to do copy and paste in your life again. So it's $70, so you basically want a course worth $70.
report automation in modern Excel. So that's what you want. Congratulations to Abiola. So Don Abiola Sani, we'll send you an email to confirm it and give you your uh, code so that you can get access to this on officetraininghub.com. So big congratulations to you. So the challenge still remains, guys. Try and build that tool, the translator tool, and then whoever builds it gets a free, you can pick whatever two-day course from our lineup of courses for absolutely free, right? So build that uh, tool and you get that absolutely free. So the Excel function translator tool, that's what you're supposed to build and then you get uh, training free. And of course, you can all go to officetraininghub.com and get some training trainings there. And if for those that want to learn Power BI, we have a very detailed Power BI course. It's a very detailed three-day course on Power BI. And what you get taught is what you have on the screen. So this is a report, reporting and analytics with Power BI. So these are, this is what you get taught in three days. You learn how to build data models in day one. You learn how to write DAX in day two. And then you come with your own data and automate your own report in day three, building your data from scratch with the Power BI. So thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to give you another poll, please. I would like you guys to answer some other second poll. So if you can quickly answer this second poll for me, that would be cool. I just want to know what Excel tools you currently use. So what are the Excel tools you use currently? Okay, so, wow, 80 something percent of us use VLOOKUP, that's wonderful. So let's quickly answer it, I will close the poll very shortly. I've over taken, I've taken most of my time. Okay, so those, that's what you use. So 69% of us have used index and match. This is a very advanced class. So I kind of remember that a lot of you uh, are using Excel for quite a while. Uh, it's 5% VLOOKUP, 92% of these pivot tables. This is a very, very smart class. Well, very, very smart set of uh, people for this webinar. Very interesting. So what about Power BI? I mean, do you guys use Power BI? Have you really used Power BI? And if you have, then what are the modern Excel, uh, modern Power BI tools that you've used? Have you used any of these Power BI tools? So which of these modern Excel Power BI tools have you used? Yeah, I know you've used Excel, but this modern Power Pivot, Power Query, Power DAX, M, Power View, Power Maps. If you've really used them, not just played with them, if you really use them for your work, can you take if you've really used them? Okay, uh, from the statistics I'm looking at as people are entering, 27% um, of us have used Power Pivot. Nobody has used Power Query. Hmm. To me, Power Query is like one of the most important uh, tools in Excel. It helps you clean your data automatically, clean, automates all your cleaning process, clean up your data. So maybe if you guys, the same link you used to register for this webinar, you could register for the next webinar and ask questions specific for, to Power Query so that we can focus on that next month. And, and some people want uh, financial modeling. If you do, you could send us, put, a, put it there in the, uh, when you register for next month that maybe you would like a, a separate webinar for modeling, which I think could be, could be good for financial modeling. All right, so that's it. 27% um, of us have used Power Pivot. Nobody has used Power Query here. Yeah, that's strange. You use it on a regular basis. 9% use Power View, 9% use Power Maps, and about 73% of us say we've not used any of these tools at all. Okay. So thanks, everybody. I think it was a really, really great time we spent together, and I look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. So we are, we are done for the day or for the month, and some of this is going to be put online. I'll do the Excel... I'm going to record the, those Excel shortcuts or tips I talked about, so we'll put all of that online. So you should get a, an email from us, let's say Tuesday, and hopefully I get an email from you to win the challenge. So hopefully you'll be able to win that challenge, which is the Excel, um, this Excel function uh, dialogue or Excel function, um, I mean Excel function translator. And again, no VBA, no VBA, you're just using this and you're feeding from the data. Download the data right now from the handout. You have it in that tool you're looking at right now. Download this. You can download this tool. It's very cool. Send it to somebody you know from another country. 
one of these countries here, yeah, English, French, German, Danish, Dutch, Italian, Brazilian, or Czech, it translates all the functions to that. In fact, you can even use it to learn some of those languages. So guys, thank you very much, and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye. <laughs>